But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Shaman Thomas. Welcome back to another YouTube channel video. Well, welcome back to another YouTube video. And oh my goodness, I just want to talk about Jesus. Like, I love him so much. He's done so much for my life. He is working. Um, he, I don't even have the words. Jesus, I don't even have the words to describe you and what you've been doing in my life. Yeah, I was in, I was in deep prayer last night and this morning. And he put so many things on my spirit. Like about myself and about others and about the world and what he wants me to speak on in this YouTube video. So as you see from the title, Lil Nas is going to be addressed in this, but this is not all about him. I also want to put another video in here about the young new servants for Christ, including myself, because I just gave my life to Jesus Christ September 5th, 2019. So I'm, a, I'm still a babe in Christ. First off, Lil Nas, we're going to talk about Lil Nas, do Lil Nas, okay? So he dropped um, a very demonic music video and he dropped a brand new pair of shoes. I think it was like Nikes or something like that. Nike said they don't got nothing to do with them. But he dropped some Nikes. They had human blood in them. They had scripture on it that he kind of used out of context. And what else was what's up with these shoes, man? They were called Satan shoes. That's what they was called. They was called Satan shoes. And one of the slogans was, you rather... I can't remember. I don't even want to say it because I don't want to defile myself. The Bible says that there is power of life and death within inside of our tongues. So I ain't even going to say what little dude said. But let me just put it like this. Lil Nas, Jesus, he love you, dog. And we love you too. And we ain't going to judge you because God's going to judge you for everything that you're doing. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, he's going to reap as well. And I just want to let you know, if you ever come across this video, man, God, he is an avenger. He is our father. He's a man of war and vengeance is his. So please repent for your sins, man. Please, dog, because this is this is out of control. This is ridiculous. You need to repent for your sins because if you don't, you're going to go straight to hell and you won't serve in hell. You won't reign in hell. You won't be no king or no pop star or no movie star or whatever you want to be. You won't be that in hell. You'll be burning in everlasting chains of fire and the torment will never end. It's for eternity. And you will be in complete separation from Jesus Christ, the God of comfort, the God of peace, the author and finisher of my faith. Understand what I'm saying? So to get back into it. I'm not even mad at you, bro, because I kind of expected that out of somebody who doesn't know God. But I do want to let the other Christians know Christ, he died for the ungodly. He, when we were living in sin, and I'm not saying that we were Satanists. I'm saying that we were murderers. I'm not saying any of that, although some of us may have been. But Christ, he died for the ungodly. While we were out in the world prior to us coming to Jesus Christ and knowing and accepting him as our Lord and as our Savior, he died for us and he still loved us. And he doesn't love us more than he loved us then. Because no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, no matter what you do, you can't impress God more than he is already impressed with you right now in this very moment. He loves you. Everybody watching this video, including Lil Nas, including whoever, Satanists, uh, whoever you are, he loves you. For God sent his son to this world, his only begotten son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus love you. Come to him today. Repent for your sins today. The best and greatest days of your life are waiting for you. But back to the topic though. Christ, he came to call the sinners to repentance. Not the righteous. Right? Now we, us... Nobody in this world is perfect. Nobody in this world is good but the Father. For the Christians that are saying, hold on, we righteous, we righteous. We are righteous through our faith in Jesus Christ. Our own righteousness is as filthy rags to God. Our, our own wisdom is foolishness to God, right? But when we live in the Spirit and when we walk after the Spirit, we start to reap the fruits of the Spirit. Say too, we have to be mindful and we have to be watchful because we're in the last days. And in the last days, there's going to be many false prophets. There's going to be mockers such as Lil Nas and 
whatever crew he's a part of. There's going to be false Christ. There's going to be all kinds of things. And that's why we are to test every single spirit. Test every spirit. Why am I saying test every spirit? Because this dude dropped this Satan shoe right on Passover. He's dropping it right before Good Friday, right before we go into the service on Sunday or Saturday and start to praise Jesus and reflect on his resurrection. He dropped that so that we can get defiled. Because you ain't just saying this dude got a Satan shoe. You're going on his Instagram page. You're looking at his Twitter. You, you're going on all these satanic websites trying to find out more information about it. And you're getting defiled. There is a such thing as a curse. There is a such thing as a spell. There is a such thing as a demonic portal. Demonic anointing. Demonic power. Now us. The Bible says a curse will not land on somebody that is not deserving of it. All doors to the enemy, they need to be shut. They need to be slammed shut and sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ. When we willfully defile ourselves with mankind and with the worldly flesh and with the worldly desires, we open those doors up. And then that's, and then that's when all those spells and curses can land on us. I had somebody say they felt like a demon was attached to them after they were on that little Nas page. I had somebody in my church get prayer from my pastor because they felt like something was wrong after looking into that information. They are trying to defile us and take away or they are trying to spoil the faith in Christ that we have on the Holy Week, on Good Friday, when we're in service. They are trying to take away and zap the Holy Ghost power because you have to realize another thing too. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for bringing this to my mind. On his shoe, it says Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Now, um, I'm just paraphrasing, but it says, Then I saw a light like Lucifer falling from heaven. Hey, boy, you better finish the rest of that scripture. Luke chapter 10, 19, it says, Behold, I have given you, Jesus said, Behold, I have given you power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. We walk in power and authority with Christ. You ain't worried about little dude. And another thing too, thank you Holy Spirit again for bringing this to my mind. We don't battle against flesh and blood, but rather principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, also known as demons. We ain't battling against Lil Nas. We battling against that spirit inside of him that's trying to take our kids captive. We battling against that spirit inside of him that's trying to defile the church of Jesus Christ in which he is coming back for without spot and without wrinkle. We ought to be blameless in his sight. And this isn't a work of ourselves. This is a work of the Holy Spirit. And please, y'all, Christians, soldiers, servants, please take care of this temple right here. Spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, everything. Because you have to realize the Spirit of God dwells inside of us. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is living inside of us. And God said, whoever defiles the temple of God, him shall God destroy because these temples are holy, baby. We're supposed to glorify him with every finger, with every ear, with every eyeball. We need to glorify Jesus Christ. We need to glorify him in every way, in every way possible, in every way that you can think. We need to glorify Jesus with these bodies. We can't just be looking at whatever music video. We just can't be looking at people's shoes and doing, no. Be wise, be, be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. What? Why are we all looking and, and being hate? Why? We, no. Listen, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says desire without knowledge, it leads us straight to sin. It makes us haste and move quick to sin because we have no direction. We have no knowledge. And the Bible says we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And the book of Isaiah says that my people go into captivity for a lack of knowledge. We need to seek wisdom. Let us all ask God for wisdom so that he may give it to us so that we are not defiled and willfully walking into these traps from Satan. I ain't walking onto no Instagram page that's full of sin and full of demonic anointing. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I got power and authority over that. I got power and authority over that. The thing too that we got to realize, anytime you are like so, Anybody that actually watched the music video or they went on this dude page and they feel like they got a demon or something like that or they feel like something attacked them. Hey, 
I'm gonna leave my pastor's information in the description box, but I gotta tell you this, any thought that comes to your mind, because you gotta remember, even a thought of foolishness is sin, and you have to also meditate on this scripture right here. Every single thought that goes against the true knowledge of God, that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God, any thought that is contrary to the Bible, bring that thought into captivity with Holy Ghost chains of fire and command it to obey Jesus Christ. Every thought getting cast down, every thought is getting pulled down in the name of Jesus Christ. Every stronghold, every demonic stronghold that has been placed on you due to visiting this dude's page or looking at any of his pictures or going on any satanic website, I command it right now in the name of Jesus Christ to lose its grip. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command Holy Ghost fire to break the chains of any curse, any spell, any demon that has attached itself to a true child of God. We bring it down and we mash it up in the name of Jesus. You gotta remember who you are in Christ. He did not give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And he said in his word that the righteous, remember, you child of God, you daughter of God, you son of God, you are righteous through your faith in Jesus Christ, which means that you are as bold as a lion. You need to start using your authority over the enemy today. Use your authority. Don't wait. Don't look around. Don't be scared. Don't be timid. God told Joshua, be of good courage, be strong, be brave, for I am with you wherever you go. Meditate on this. And we have to realize we have access to the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, which is going to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. We have the sword of the spirit, which is the living word of God. We have the belt of truth. We have the shoes of peace, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Put on that full armor of God. And after you pray it on yourself, start praying in the spirit. Ask God to help you pray in the spirit. Ask God to help you worship him in spirit and truth. You ain't scared of nobody. Because Christ is inside of you. Christ has overcame death. No sin shall have dominion over you because you're not under the law. You're under grace. And in the Great Commission, Christ said they're going to drink up poison and they're not going to be affected. He said they're going to pick up serpents with their bare hands. They're going to lay hands on the sick and cast out devils and they won't be affected. Start using your authority in Christ. You are a soldier for the true and living God. I am speaking to you. I'm speaking into your life. You shall not fear because God did not give you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Meditate on that. The word says we need to meditate continually on his law. Ask God. Ask God this. Crucify my flesh, Jesus. Transform and renew my mind with the word of God. Wash me and make me blameless. Help me be able to discern what the perfect will of God is. Say, Lord, circumcise my heart. Because you have to realize the heart is deceitful above all things. Our heart needs to be circumcised by Jesus Christ. He needs to put in us a new heart so that when we delight in him, he can give us the desires of the brand new heart that he gave us. Ask God this. God... I pray right now that you lay down your law on the table of my heart. Lay down your word on the table of my heart because you have to also realize man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of God's mouth. The reason that some of us are scared is because we don't got no life in us. This is our life right here. This is how you live, player. This is how you live. This is how your spirit lives. This human, look, I, this is crazy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm about to go get some Chick-fil-A right now to feed my physical body. How many times do you eat a day? Hey, some of y'all are gluttonous too. Some of y'all be eating like six, five times a day. I, I eat a lot a day too. I ain't gonna hold you. But you know what else? We have a spiritual body. We need to make sure we are being fed spiritually 
cussed. We need to be we need to be sure that we are being fed more spiritually than we are physically. I can tell you right now that I eat more spiritually than I do physically. I'm a slim bull too. Yeah, you know I mean, I hey, you need to be eating more spiritually than you eat physically. Flat out, no excuses. And if you want to roll a lot, get that Bible app, put in the audio, press play on the Bible app. When you wake up in the morning, you need a schedule for God. You need intimacy with God. That is how you grow, dog. That is how you're going to grow. That is how you're going to go deeper and higher with Jesus Christ by staying in his presence, by being in the shelter of the Most High. He's going to reveal things to you. He's going to transform your mind. He's going to plant things inside of you. And he's going to rip things out too as well. He's going to get a sledgehammer. Because you got to see another thing you got to realize too. The word of God is like a hammer. It breaks rocks into pieces. Let God use that hammer and break your flesh into pieces. Break that uncircumcised heart into pieces. Break that fleshly mind, that carnal mind into pieces. Because a carnal mind is enmity with God. Those who are in the flesh, they can't please God. We need to live in the spirit. A spiritual mind is life and is peace, baby. And all peace surpasses all understanding. We need Christ. We ain't scared of nobody, man. And um, I don't, I don't mean to get like that. The spirit just took over. But I'm seeing people trying to mock Christianity. And they trying to act like... Because I know the word, it says that there's going to be those who appear in godliness, but they're not going to have no power. They're going to deny the power thereof. They're going to be going to church. They're going to be reading the word, but they're going to have no power. And I feel like personally, God didn't tell me this, but personally, I feel like America and the world, they don't fear God anymore because they're so used to his church, which is called to be without spot and wrinkle. They're so used to his church walking in excuses, walking in passivity, walking in an Ahab spirit. They're not used to Christians who are walking in power that Christ gave them. They're not used to preachers like John the Baptist and Elijah the prophet. They're not used to that. So therefore, they don't fear God. And if you don't fear God, then you don't have wisdom because the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. To keep his commandments and fear God, that's the whole duty of a man. But um, um, I also wanted to speak on another thing too. Young soldiers in Christ, young servants in Christ, stand up. I salute you. I give you all the glory. I, I tip my, I don't got a hat, but I tip it to you. I love you. I love everybody out on Instagram right now. I'm meeting so many people too. Um, the move of God in my generation is just crazy. I'm like, whoa, you know, and I just gave my life to Christ September September 5th, 2019. And I'm seeing everybody else come. But um, yeah, another thing I wanted to address one of my good brothers, please pray for him too. If you see this video, pray for my man. But he's about 20 years old, I think. Brand new to Christ, on fire, scorching hot. He reminds me of like a John the Baptist type guy. Like he's always confronting and always exposing and always, you know, he's always out there. I love him, man. I love him so much. His heart is truly after God, like David's was. Like his, oh man. But he's been preaching a lot and he's been having... A lot of opposition towards him. So I'm going to make this second half of the video for those who are struggling with what people say and what people do and how people feel about the gospel. Look, let me tell you something. You need to preach the gospel because God told you to. And the same way that he told Ezekiel, he said they are of a rebellious people. Preach the word to them, whether they listen or whether they don't. It does not matter. And the reason that it doesn't matter is because the word of God the word of God and never returns void. It's going to accomplish what Jesus wants it to accomplish. It's going to accomplish what the father pleases. And this word is not no ordinary word. We just went over how we get life from absorbing and consuming these pages and, and this. Because you have to realize this is power, baby. The word of God, it didn't come only to you in word, but in power. And of course, it's going to be foolish to those who are perishing. But to us, Christian believers, us who walk in the spirit, us who are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, this is power. The word of God is power and it's going to accomplish what he wants it to, whatever he pleases. Another thing that I wanted to say, 
Don't be fearful. Go out there. He gave you a spirit of boldness, of courage. Hey, I really love how God told Jeremiah. He said, because Jeremiah was making excuses. He said, I'm only Holy Spirit. Thank you again for bringing this to my mind. He said, I'm only but a youth, just as we are. We're youths. And Jeremiah was like, I'm only but a youth. God, da, da, da. God said, I don't say you're only but a youth. I'm going to put in your mouth fire. And the people that you preach to, they're going to be of wood. You're going to consume them with that fire. I'm going to set you above kingdoms, above nations. You are going to be planting. You are going to be rooting. You are going to be pulling down. I'm going to use you and I'm going to be with you as a warrior. I'm going to be with you, before you, behind you, on all sides of you. You better preach that word, soldier. You better preach that word, daughter of God. You better preach that word, son of God. Preach it. And, and God is not mocked. He's not. Whatever man sows, he's going to reap. All those people talking to you, uh, saying all that stuff, let God judge them. Get back to doing the Lord's work. Get back to being in a prayer closet. Get back to fasting. Get back to being desperate for God. Let him judge those of the world. You focus on him. Focus on him. Let him fill you up. Let him renew you every single day. Because as long as we're living, we need deliverance. We need to get this flesh broken down every single day. Bop, 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 bop. Breaking things off every single day. So, I just want to leave that with y'all. Be of good courage. Don't quit. Ask God for a spirit of boldness when they confront you. Whether it be in person or whether it be in your your um your inbox or your comments, because you know a lot of people are cowards nowadays. They don't just they don't step to you no more. You know? So stand firm in the word of God. Be rooted in the word of God. You who trust in him, you will be safe. He is our strong tower. Run into that strong tower. Be safe in Jesus Christ. He's going to protect you on all sides. He's your provider. He's your deliverer. He's your healer. He's your savior. He's your redeemer. He knows everything that you need even prior to you praying to him. Let him take care of you. If you feel as though you can't fight, fall down. Call out to God. Ask for help. Ask for strength in him. Because when we are weak, we are strong in him. Don't ever quit. Don't ever, don't ever do what God didn't tell you to do. Don't ever give up on a plan that God has for you. Whatever work he started in you, he's going to complete. But you need this sword. You need this sword to fight. So if you're out there preaching, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Instagram, if you're on TikTok, make sure you're laced. Make sure you are rooted in the word of God. Make sure this law is on your tongue every single night. Make sure that you have a prayer life. Make sure that you're walking with the Lord in the spirit and not in the flesh. And let him take care of everything else. Because we can't do anything on our own. We're saved by our grace through faith alone in Christ Jesus. I love y'all. Salute.